my uh, studying for the book of Zechariah, I ran across this text in Ezekiel's book, in chapter 36, where Ezekiel prophesies to the land. <clears throat> now Ezekiel, as you know, prophesied to uh, several different things. He, he prophesied to bones. He prophesied to the wind. He prophesied to people too. But here in this chapter, he actually prophesies to the land. <clears throat> And the reason this caught, well, this caught my attention for a couple of different reasons, but for one, uh, we, we all love to see the Lord work. Mm -hmm. We love to be able to see His hand and what He has done so that we might glorify His name, even if it doesn't directly concern us. And that's, that's just one reason. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Jews here, but some other things also. <clears throat> In, uh, I've got a lot here. I'm going to have to skip some of what I've got typed up here. But in uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, <clears throat> some of what we see here is uh, not only directed toward the, toward the Jews, but it's also a picture of the end of the world and the ushering in of a new heavens and a new earth. <clears throat> We'll start at verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. That's the land. The land has borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. In other words, this is going to stop now. I have lifted up my hand. That's it. Far enough. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. I like the sound of that. They're, they're ready to come now, so start bearing fruit for my people. Mm -hmm. Now this is, this is certainly applied to the nation of Israel and to the promised land of Canaan, but I couldn't help but think this, this in another sense applies to the whole earth. Mm -hmm. where there's going to come a time when it's all going to change and it's going to shoot forth, it's going to be freed from the burden of sin, yeah. and it's going to become fruitful and productive, and as one uh, apostle put it, wherein dwelleth righteousness mm -hmm. in preparation for the saints which are at hand to come. They're ready, they're standing by, you might say. For behold, I am for you. And I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. Everybody's prophesying to the land. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. Mm -hmm. Couldn't help but think of what the Apostle Paul said there in Romans chapter 11. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and so all Israel shall be saved. Mm -hmm. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Mm -hmm. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. So he says here, back in Ezekiel, I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the cities shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be built. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance. Thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men." <clears throat> I was thinking that God is going to accomplish this in such a marvelous way that none of us have ever thought of. This is, 
the Lord works this way, he'll, he'll tell you what he's going to do, but you can't figure out how in the world yeah. is he going to do this. Uh -huh. Oh, here, what we just, just last Lord's Day, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday. This, this came to mind. Now, what about when Jesus went and preached the spirits in prison? Who ever thought that would happen? Right. Who yeah. saw that coming? That after he died, mm -hmm. his spirit would go and preach in prison. Preach to souls. Who ever saw that coming? Mm -hmm. But it, well, this is the way the Lord works. I think this is probably Amen. the way he's going to fulfill a lot of these prophecies. It, we never thought it would happen that way, but uh, praise God. Yeah. And, he, and he's going to do it in righteousness. He's certainly not going to violate anything that he's said mm -hmm. or, or uh, be unfaithful to his own word. <laughs> He's going to complete this in righteousness. <clears throat> but this text also caused me to think of the end of the world. <clears throat> because in the same way that Canaan has been defiled, and that God's people have been scattered and dispersed from the promised land, they've been scattered all over this earth. It's been defiled and it's weighed down with the corruption of sin. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 says, Thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth the garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years fail not. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 24 says this, The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in a snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage. Mm -hmm. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, mm -hmm. and it shall fall, and not rise again. Mm -hmm. Now John in Revelation chapter 21 saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth, first earth were passed away. <clears throat> so I couldn't help but think of this in reading this text also. And perhaps these two are both tied together. I can't say that for certain, but the thought did enter my mind that maybe these are the, these two things will happen simultaneously. <clears throat> and I'll uh, let's continue in Ezekiel chapter 36, and I'll tell you why this came to mind. Verse 24: For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you unto your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Mm -hmm. I will save you from all your uncleannesses, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and increase the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall ye 